G'day guys, welcome back to another video. We're gonna have a look at Cardano again today. We're gonna to update the price charts. Things aren't moving the way we are expecting them to. So I wanna update that. Plus I wanna go over and have a look at a few of the trades which we've been tracking for the last two months or so on the channel. Things like Reef, Wi-Fi, Link, Loopring is a new one, IOTA, tons of others. So stick around for that. They're coming up in the video. I'm going to go through a little bit of news and essentially look at those altcoins on the charts to see if there is something worthwhile trading for our 10, 20, 100x. If you're not familiar by now, those are the sort of titles that are used on YouTube, 100x altcoins. And you probably know by now that there aren't that many out there which you can really easily pick. So we're going to dive into those and see what we can find for a good 10, 20x bag coming up. So if you like the sound of that, hit me up, likes down below, subscribe down below, bell notification icon. It does honestly go a long way to helping out the channel. You can see the tremendous growth and I only have you guys to thank. We're at 76,000. Let's see if we can get to 80,000 by the end of the week. And uh, 2,000 likes goes a, goes a hell of a long way. All right, guys, enough of me rambling. Let's have a look at Cardano. Cardano update, weekly chart. Let's start there and have a look through ADA on USD, ETH, Bitcoin, Binance, and DOT. So we're looking at this yesterday. Things haven't really moved, which for Cardano holders is a great sign. We did see it start to break down against everything else except the US dollar, but it's holding up and it looks like we're continuing to consolidate at these levels. I'm on a daily chart. This is trading view. You can get a link to this in the description down below. Basically, I'm looking at the volume down here and what the bar patterns are doing. So we had a little bit of a drop yesterday, but we've closed up nice okay close it's only halfway into the bar we would like to see it a lot higher but the volume is down so that's okay it basically just means that there's not that much trading going on and people are trying to figure out what is coming next so let's draw this line up here at around a dollar 20 that looks like it could be not guaranteed it could be another support level now i want to make mention to some people probably the guys who don't watch it they just see the title the thumbnail and then comment and they don't watch any of the video uh, basically, these sorts of videos are talking about what may happen. Sure, it can go up, down, sideways, who knows? No one really knows. We're just trying to use probabilities of bar patterns and uh, volume action and then marrying those together to see what has happened in the past and see whether that has a probability of happening in the future. So that's essentially what it's all about. And the titles are there because if I'm titling something like nothing happened today in Cardano, Who's going to watch that video? The idea of this is to learn from what it is we're seeing in the charts. And if you guys want to start your own YouTube channels, get out there, go and do it. Basically, just do it as like a trading journal. That's essentially what I'm doing here. So looking at this, not much has happened. Uh, I'm waiting to see a break. You can see I've got alerts here on the side. I want to see a break down of $1.10 or a break up just above these close levels because these are the highest closes that we've seen on Cardano ever. Looking back all the way to 2018, I don't think we've had closes above that $1.30 level. So we'll just have a quick look. The reason being is that the closes are a very strong indicator of what the market is thinking. And the last close we had uh, when we got to the peaks in January of 2018, there was one close at a dollar, call it 15. Essentially, it's this number up here, and it's a dollar 14.94, so $1.15. And basically from there, it tanked. So this, these are the highest closes we've seen on Cardano. And it looks like we're having that uh, slow bleed up or that slow melt up like Ethereum had. So that's what I'm seeing here. And ideally, if we get a break, then it's another re-entry point because it could shoot off from here. Big things I want to mention is, well, these are my targets up here anyway, $2.50 and $3.00. So 250 and a three, that is pretty much the entire range of Cardano's history from the low in March, the COVID crash, up till the current all time high, just with a Fib extension on it. Sorry, this one is called a Fib retracement. We also use Fib extensions. What we have here is 168%. So 61%, I should say, above the high. So it's, this is the 100% here, and then 61.8% of that above. That's a Fibonacci number natural nature numbers. We won't get into that here. Then two, which is another 100% of this range. So this is the range here. We're only looking at it from top to bottom. And then this is the 100% above. 
That's as simple as it is. That's why we have a, a target of around three dollars and seven. So somewhere beneath that, maybe a two eighty or a two ninety might be an okay level to to get out. Uh, if the market tends to overshoot, maybe goes to four bucks or three fifty. The point I want to make here is if this is where we're entering, then the risk reward gets extremely high. The headlines are fantastic. Just think of a YouTube video, Cardano at $2, Cardano at $3, Cardano at $4, $5, whatever the hell it is, doesn't really matter because the percentage return isn't that much to two bucks. It's 68%, 105% to $2.50 or 150% to around that $3 mark. So you know that these markets will tank 50 to 70% in a day or t uh, shoot up 200% in a day as well. I'm, I'm basically weighing up here the headlines to the two or the $3 Cardano compared to the percentage gains that we have on hand, uh, looking at the risk to the downside. I think this is setting up again. I don't think we got the, the continued breakdown in the US dollar that we're looking for after the hard fork which looks extra strong. And this is what happens as a trader. You could say, well, you could have just held the whole thing. Sure. But if you're in at two cents, 10 cents, and you're getting some profit out at $1.20, I'm not, uh, personally, I don't sell everything in the one hit at the top. I don't buy everything at the one point at the bottom and sell everything at the top. It's essentially taking my money off the table that I invested early on. And I didn't do this with Cardano. It's what I'm doing with Ethereum and Bitcoin and Zen which I haven't talked about that much, but essentially you take some off, take the initial capital, take some profits. If there's another good opportunity, sweet, I can go again, I don't have to worry. Then let the rest of it run. This thing can run up 250, three bucks, four bucks, who knows? But ideally that's kind of the way to trade these in order to earn the 10, 20 Xs, the 100 grand portfolios, the million dollar portfolios. It's not just buying something at the exact low and selling it at the exact top. That's Cardano USD. It's the, probably the longest one I wanted to have a look at. Cardano DOT, still trending down from yesterday. Cardano ETH, it yesterday was a down day and right now we're just looking like we're heading down a little bit again. Cardano Bitcoin. Yes, yesterday was a down day, but it's still holding reasonably steady. Notice that we did run 200%, which is pretty good. That was that entire range, low to high, projected from the low, ran 200% and pulled back. These FIB numbers are bang on. Uh, Cardano, Binance, nice little pullback. This is looking stronger against Binance as well. So that's pretty much what I'm seeing with ADA. I make it clear doesn't look like it's going to fall too far against the US dollar at the moment. And I have the alert set up. And I think it will probably at this stage because the buy the, the biases to the upside will shoot up from here. But I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. So if you buy in here and it dunk, drops 20%, don't come crying to me in the comment section. I'm not telling you to buy anything. All right, we're just looking at the chart patterns and what the probabilities are from here. Looking forward, I want to go through uh, Link because I think Link looks like a reasonable setup. I've gone through pretty much my whole list and what I see with Link is the dollar pattern I'm not so fussed on, but I think it looks like a pretty good uh, accumulation area. Not that one, Link BTC. I like it as a, a Bitcoin chain link chart. I think it could be a good accumulation area here provided we don't break down beneath the 50,000 level and ultimately beneath the 35,000 level. So this was my accumulation area and then here again. So some of my position I'm up, the other part I'm neutral, break even. So averaged out, I'm slightly up. So nothing that I'm considering selling yet. And if it does happen to fall back down, then this is my next uh, accumulation zone here for chain link versus Bitcoin. And I want to see this thing eventually trend up. So it's had a nice long time down at the moment, which is what we want to see. We want to see these things start to accumulate. No one's talking about it. It's nice and quiet in Chainlink. Chainlink uh, has been down for 198 days. The low was somewhere around 140. So about five months down, we're about coming up to our seventh month below the all time high, which is also pretty good news. While I'm on Chainlink, here is Decrypt. Uh, Link Marines have a new way to make money with Chainlink. And of course, I, I also talk about BlockFi. So you can stake your Chainlink on BlockFi for about five or 
param here we go, 5.5% starting March 2nd. So BlockFi, if you want to link to that, link is down below. It's uh, like a, a wallet, you transfer your crypto in there, it is centralized, so pay attention to that. And then you can get yourself 5.5% on your link. The reason I like that is because I see this as an accumulation zone for Link, Link BTC. Link USD is holding up okay. It's above its previous old all time high. We're not at our $36 level and it could be a good area just to continue buying in. Look, the, the deal with a lot of these cryptos is they can fall 15, 25% and then still be in an accumulation zone. They could even rise another 20% and still be in an accumulation zone. You know, that could be across these levels here. So that is that is what we have to take to the party when we are playing with cryptocurrency because we know the upside could be something astronomical that just continues to crush the chart. Link at the moment is about an $11, $11 billion market cap. So Chainlink, $11.7 billion. If we get anywhere close to half of Ethereum's value or Binance's value currently, that'll give us around a 4 to half of Ethereum's is 80. So look, could be about a four to seven X from where it is. So call it a seven X. Let's go to the top end, seven times 30, $210 link. And that is going to push us well out up into the stratosphere up here. So from current prices to around 210, 600%. So if we don't even get that, and we only get about halfway, 105, we get a hundred dollar link. 260% on the dollar. That's okay. It's not what we really, really want in crypto. We want in the hundreds, multiples, multiples, but you know, no one's going to sneeze at around 200%, 260% profit. So Link is looking good like a setup and the accumulation zone is what I really see with Link BTC. Now it's yet to be proven. It has had an accumulation breakout and now we're going through another sideways. This could last a fair period of time. I don't know how long this will last, but that's the point of being patient, buying low. This is what happens for Ethereum and Bitcoin in 2020. Do you think this was taken off to the moon for everyone that was buying in 2019 and 2020? No, it wasn't taken off to the moon. It took two years. I'm not saying Link is going to take two years, but the patience really paid off. You can see now Ethereum buying at 100, 200 bucks, got to two grand, easy. And you, you can pr pretty well be assured that those strong projects in the top three, top 10 should do reasonably well. Of course, this is cryptocurrency, high risk, et cetera, et cetera. But that's why I like these sort of things when no one's talking about it and it's sideways, uh, sort of trending down into this period. Last thing on link is BlockFi. So I've mentioned that link is down below. If you want to stake any of your link that you happen to be accumulating, use that link and you can earn up to $250 uh, depending on how much Bitcoin, etc., you transfer to the app within 30 days, I believe. So check that out. All right, next on the list, we were looking at IOTA. I've talked about this a lot, and this is my Cardano Ethereum killer. So IOTA BTC, it's had a breakout. It's in one of those accumulation areas, really low down uh, compared to its old previous all-time highs, but it has broken out of this area. So this was something that we covered just a couple of days ago in other cryptocurrencies, you know, the 1020X sort of videos. This is looking reasonably good to me. From here, the risk is it's not gonna go straight up and you might not be in profit. Maybe it comes back and tests this old uh, resistance, which may become support, and that's around 20 to 25% drop. So if you throw in a thousand bucks in, you know, every month, you might see $250 losses depending on where this falls. So that's the way I play the game. That's what I'm prepared to uh, stomach because I see the upside being very big. So what am I looking at? Somewhere from here, my, f my first targets are only low, about 80%. Then I'm looking at these areas here, about 180%. Then these tops are coming in around 300%. And that is pretty conservative. If we don't get anywhere near these tops and we only just get a small blow off to these areas, I'm looking around 80 to 300%. I, I like those odds considering how early on this pattern looks. Now this looks like it is starting to trend up, which is why I am looking further into IOTA and just slowly getting in because we could get stopped out like this area. This was looking reasonably okay too before we got the breakdown. But the good news is it did break down, but it's broken back above, which shows the strength 
in this support area and that this level seems to be a reasonable number to hold around that 18 to 2000 sats. So IOTA is one of those other ones that looks like a good accumulation area. I'll mention another accumulation one now, which is Tezos. Tezos isn't looking as strong as I first hoped, and I have talked about it before. You can see the difference here. See the comparison where we got lows, 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 another low here, all these lows through this point. Now the market pushed above it, but it's back under that area. So that's weaker compared to what we just saw on IOTA, which isn't a great sign. But there's a lot coming out for uh, Tezos, like we can see here with some of the news. Tezos ties up uh, Wolfram Blockchain Labs to simplify smart contract deployments. So there is stuff happening, but I don't think it is priced into the news yet. And once people get a hang of what's going on in these other blockchains, you know, they could be faster, they've got better serviceability, interoperability than Cardano or something like that. There's always some sort of story or agenda that's being built for the next smart contract. Then these things could start to have their move. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be uh, like a mainstayer that we think Ethereum and Cardano are going to be, but they could have that really big pump up that, um, you know, just sort of attracts the crowds in and we want to find them early. We don't want to find it when it's pumping up like Cardano's pumped from two cents to a dollar and 20. It's got to be the early on stuff. And this sort of news looks pretty good. You know, they're making partnerships, more secure, reliable smart contracts, etc. cetera. Um, just like IOTA's got their oracles and they ha they've partnered with a few other cryptocurrencies now to bring those oracles to their smart contracts. So that's the good news when it comes to these, you know, under the radar, older smart contracts, which have been building the whole time. So Tezos, also another one. So we've got to decide which ones. We don't have the unlimited amount of capital. Got to, we've got to decide which ones are the cryptos to dollar cost average into and hopefully see our 10, 20 Xs uh, come up. So Tezos USD right here. Uh, yeah, well, look, we, we have blue skies ahead of us for Tezos USD. That's another good sign. We can break above this uh, 570 level, 560 level then we're looking pretty sweet. So this could just all be accumulation before the big breakout. And if we want to get our 50X on Tezos, then from $4 that we currently are, $3.80, we need to get to 40 bucks. So it's not unheard of. And if we look at Tezos quickly, just to check its, its market cap right now is uh, 3 billion. So 10X to 30 billion, it's still under uh, our, chain, uh, our Cardano's and of course, Ethereum. It's, it's very possible in this bull market, especially if we're going to go to a multi-trillion dollar total cryptocurrency market cap, which we're currently at 1.5 trillion. So just adding another 30 billion to the mix to keep bumping up this market cap, I can see that happening. And I look at things quite conservatively, like this thing could go 20x. Who knows? We could see a $80 Tezos in a $60 billion market cap. The other nice thing about Tezos is uh, that it's basically fully diluted. You know, there's only a few left. For circulating supply is almost entirely out there. So it looks here, circulating total market cap looks like the same, but of course the fully diluted is slightly different to the market cap. Look, it's all out there. That's a, that's a really good sign to know that the market is has already absorbed the entire uh, uh, supply of Tezos. So we've looked at Tezos, we've looked at IOTA looking good, Chainlink looks like another good accumulation thing. Probably not going to hear about these things. Check out Google Trends, Cardano, IOTA, Tezos, Polkadot. Cardano, huge. Everyone's talking about it. No one's talking about IOTA, Tezos, and Polkadot's on the de decline. However, Polkadot looks like another strong one, uh, even though it has moved up so much already. So these are the things we've got to balance. Like it's it's getting closer to its all-time high again. However, we don't want to see a, a lower swing top because that would be a very, very bearish signal. Basically the market, what, what's going on here is the market has moved up. So we see exuberance, everyone's buying. It dips. People think the price is cheap. People buy in and it can't quite make it back to those all-time highs, which means very heavy weakness and it will tend to uh, dip again. Now, if you can find an accumulation range in here, that's that's good. We're just waiting out the time until there's uh, the supply has been taken off the market and then we can take off again. But if it doesn't and it breaks down, that means 
well, no one's looking to buy Polkadot anymore. But at the moment, we're still in an uptrend. It's still looking okay. Uh, yes, in a small daily uptrend on the weekly. Yeah, we're still up. So this is still positive. Let's have a look at dot ETH. Dot ETH is, is still very strong. Dot uh, against Binance accumulating at these lows again after that huge Binance run. And dot BTC. Don't worry about this. This is old data. Auto. And dot BTC he heading to new all time highs. So it, it's strong on all other fronts apart from the dot USD. So that's what I'm waiting for. And I think it should be able to break out of that point there, uh, especially with the weekly chart looking much stronger. So we want to look at the macro view for the macro picks. Now I did say I'll have a quick look at Reef YFI. So we'll have a look at uh, YFI next, YFI BTC. This is a little concerning to me because I don't want to see these lows get taken out. So these areas need to hold as support. Otherwise we could see YFI break down. Now this was one that was on my list and I have been accumulating it in these regions. But if it breaks down, hopefully we see a similar pattern to what we saw on IOTA break down and then come back above those levels. So again, essentially up and then retest. That would be ideal if we happen to break down. Ideally, we don't break down at all. Tezos is underneath these levels now, so it's sitting under there. So it needs to break above. Uh, otherwise, it's looking much, much weaker. So YFI, this is against its Bitcoin value and against its dollar, YFI, USD, here we go, Tether. It's sideways, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's not the end of the world just yet. Ideally, yes, we want to see the price continue to go up, but it could be an okay accumulation zone. What I'm looking at here, this is the first swing. I don't want to see it come back this low. And just remember these areas are going to be much bigger swings because the supply is so low on YFI. It's only about 30,000 or 40,000 uh, coins altogether, which means it can fluctuate very, very easily. So the difference between like 30 grand and 18 grand is huge, but it can easily pump to, to 70 grand or so, uh, not without much effort because the supply is so low. So YFI overall is looking okay. It's still holding up because it's still in its uh, uptrend. So ideally, a good accumulation zone. I'm going to continue doing that. However, I do like the looks of the other uh, smart contract platforms that we've talked about already. Last one I have a look at briefly is Reef. So Reef is one we've looked at a lot, especially on the live stream when KSI happened to join us on the daily. It was a little bit scary for some people. They just watched one of my videos and bought it. I'm telling you guys, not financial advice. If you can't stomach falls, then you're probably best not to be in cryptocurrency. We were looking at it around here, around 4 cents, 4.1 cents. We're currently at 3.3. 4.1 down to where we currently are. There's about a 20% loss so far, but this is accumulation for me. I'm happy with that. That's fine because I think uh, Reef has got a lot further to go, even if it is a scam. I don't know whether this thing is a scam or, or not, but I think there has a lot of potential to the upside from this move. And that's why I'm accumulating more Reef. I did sell out a little bit at four cents and I can buy it back at three. So save myself 20%. Maybe it's not even worth the effort, but here's a good target, 161% at around uh, 9 cents. My next target I like is around the 200%. So that's about 10 cents. So that's not too bad. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that if we can get there, possibly a hell of a lot further. So we'll keep tracking this as the market shoots up. So covered a lot today. Uh, this isn't like a, a typical video that I put out when it comes to cryptocurrencies because this is very heavy in the charting as opposed to the fundamentals and the news. We did look at a little bit of news for Tezos and uh, Link, which we can stake on BlockFi, link down below. Any of these tokens, if you're looking to buy them, this is not financial advice, I'm not telling you to buy anything, but if you need a platform, I have a link to SwiftX in the link down below in the description and also Binance for the international guy. SwiftX is an Aussie exchange, Binance International, easy to use as well. So Reef, YFI, IOTA, Tezos, Link, Cardano, heaps of stuff going on. Let me know in the comments if there is a 20x altcoin that you love the look of doing your own charts. You could see the fundamentals. 
shill it down below in the comment section. Maybe we'll have a look at it in a future video. But for today's video, appreciate you guys watching this. Hit that like button if you found some value from the video. Subscribe, we're nearly at 80,000. I think we might even get to 100,000 this month. Have to do something for that. Big celebrations for the 100K. That's about it for the video. I'll see you at the next one. Until then, add more fun to get more done.